Okay, let this be known that I did not pick an Ateneo team to win in one of these matchups, ah. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bolero. I'm here with Gab. Hello, guys. Yeah! Tagal, tagal na. Matagal na. It's Let been a while. Let the debate begin. Let the debates Let begin. Let the debate begin. Spoiler naman yun, Gab. Eh. Pero anyway, we're doing a very special episode today. Uh, in celebration of March Madness, we are fans of doing you know, mga theoretical um, analysis of games and debating these things. You can see in all our previous episodes, we, we've done this. So we're planning to do a March Madness bracketing series. We're starting today. So we're going to do a bracket of the top eight, or sorry, the eight most recent championship teams in the UAP. We're going to put them head to head in a March Madness style uh, competition bracket. And we're going to choose final winner. So obviously, when we try to vote, we try to do majority votes. But go ahead, Gab. Um, can you explain with, uh, explain to us how you did this bracket? Ano ba tong March Madness bracket natin? And what people can expect? So I think we can show the bracket first. So here is our bracket for today. Yes, these are the <laughs> past eight champions teams of the UAAP. So yes, there are four Ateneo Blue Eagle teams here. Because facts are facts, four times the champion at ang Ateneo the past eight seasons. So <laughs> I think you'd be hard pressed to find an eight season span na walang Ateneo sa 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 isang bracket na ganito. All right, so we're not being biased. It's just these these are really the champion teams. All right, so uh, these were randomized um, for. I, we just use the randomizer in this program, so uh, it's gonna be a one-off elimination, head-to-head matchups like a March Madness style, and we're just gonna have a, a ton of arguments on this show. <laughs> okay, okay, and obviously, just like with other um, similar, like yung drafts natin, etc. You are the expectation is you're getting the player for that season, diba? so. Kung, let's say you get like a young 30 Ravena, that's different from a 30 Ravena na graduating senior. Na, diba? So, whatever yung talent or skill level nila for that season, that's what you're gonna get out of them. Okay? And um, don't worry to the people that are listening and want to see your team or your favorite player or whatever. Be part of this bracket. We do want or plan to do more bra- March Madness bracket episodes in the succeeding weeks. So please do comment down below other suggestions or topics that we can debate or discuss in this type of format. So for example, should do you want us to discuss, let's say, the best teams that never that didn't win a championship, mga second placers or really good teams that just didn't make it? Or let's discuss top eight FSAs. We've done something similar before, so just let us know in the comment section below. So let's get started. Let's do from the top to bottom, guys. So let's discuss the very first one, the most recent champions, the DLSU Green Archers and the Season 79 DLSU Green Archers. Maui, before we talk about this, can you briefly, I'm sure people are familiar with the Season 86 DLSU Green Archers, but can you briefly summarize yung Season 79 uh, DLSU Green Archers? Because even ako medyo hindi na siya, ano eh, hindi ko na siya maalala eh. Ano, anong team ba yun? What are we talking about here? Yeah, so the season 79 team of Lasal is basically Ben Embalas entrance to the to the, to the UAAP. Uh, this is the season that they also have Jeron Teng, Tyrus Torres, uh, the Rivero Brothers, Perkins, Montalvo, Milesio, Caracot. So si Baltazar, I think was a rookie during this season, wasn't even getting any Bangko minutes. Ba? Zero, Bangko. Oh. Uh, si Abu Trater and si Jologo. Uh, I think si Sargent na lang ang player that I missed out that's relevant from that uh, team. Uh, but but yeah, uh, I would Thomas say... Thomas Torres! This... Forgot about him! No, no I said him. Bunch of alley I said him. Thomas Torres, siyempre. We remember all of all of us, especially the ones in green and blue, will remember that uh, massive alley by Thomas Torres to, to Ben Mbala. 
you can still check that out in YouTube. That's one of probably the top highlights in UAAP history. Sam? Okay, let's, let's get started. So this is the first season and only championship of Ben Mbala. I still can't believe na nagsabay si Ben Mbala, si Rivero, and si Jeron Teng. So, and Perkins, by the way. So, Gab, um, who are you picking? Mbala Lasal or KQ Lasal? As much as I love the season 86, and the, and the season 86, the De La Salle Green Archers, is probably the most the most I've followed a DLSU Green Archer team, mainly because I um they were so in, enjoyable to watch. KQ was probably my one of my favorite players in the UAP this past season. Just watching him orchestrate the offense and you know, carry this DLSU team and just watch his improvement from game to game. But I don't think they're they're beating in a one-off game scenario. There is no way they're beating Ben Mbala and this DLSU Green Archers team. Maui just ran off how stacked this season 79 DLSU Green Archers team was. Not only did they not did they have the most dominant player ever to grace a UAAP court in Ben Mbala. Just look at his raw numbers, guys. He he was he was a freaking beast. And the on-court product backs it up. He was unstoppable. This team also had Jeron Teng, who was, I think, an underrated part of this team that when they went to the finals again next season and against the Ateneo Blue Eagles, they struggled. They didn't struggle, but a big part of their offense was missing without Jeron Teng. Because for those who... For those who were who were a bit younger, who didn't weren't able to watch Jeron Teng. Jeron Teng was also a beast unto himself. Medyo na overshadow lang siya nang dumating si Ben Mbala. Pero Jeron Teng was like LeBron James in the UAAP. You know, he he was big, he was tall, he was fast, and had a really good touch inside the paint. He had no outside shot, much like the early LeBron James seasons, but. This guy could get to the rim at will. You can create offense. He was a terror defensively just for his sheer size. And you said it. They had Richie Rivero coming off the bench. They had Aljun Velesio coming off the bench. Andre Karakot. Uh, I think, no. Thomas Torres was their starting point guard. They had Andre Karakot also coming off the bench. They also had Jason Perkins, who I think was one of the more underrated uh, as one of my favorite Lasallian, players, yeah, players. was one of my favorites. Hefty lefty. Honestly, just to watch him play, the hefty lefty, exactly. And not only that, they they had Abu Trater backing up Ben Mbala. Uh, they had Prince Rivero as their backup power forward. Justin Balazar, you you said you said being a Nimawi, was coming off the bench for this team was not getting any minutes. So as Mike Phillips and Raven Cortez and Bright Nwanko have no chance in hell of guarding <laughs> Ben Mbala. There is no way, despite them being a bit taller than Ben Mbala, there is no way they could have stopped the massive force that was Ben Mbala. I think LaSalle of Season 79 beats the LaSalle of Season 86 handily. Maui, Sam. Yeah, uh, I think I have to agree with Gab. Uh, if you look at that team, uh, I don't think I even mentioned pa si, si Kib Montalbo, who was their defensive stopper. And also has had a stellar career. Oh, a pro player, she was so was annoying. <laughs> Kib yeah, yeah. Montalbo. I think si Kib yung Kun- starter, hindi ba Maui? Probably si Kib Montalbo started to guard the, the best player from the opposing team. Uh, he holds, also had a lot of highlights. Uh but I have to agree with Gab. Uh, yung team na to is just too stacked. Uh, if you look at the roster, I think 11 or or 12 out of these players went to the pros. Uh, that's not even mentioning si Ben Mbala, who is arguably one of the top, or probably one of one of the top FSAs in the history of the UAAP. Uh, yung level of dominance ng Mbala and Teng combination is unmatched. Uh, I think that's one of the best duos that we've had uh, in recent history. Uh, and that, that's not even mentioning yung ano, level of talent ng supporting cast nila. Uh, make no mistake, uh, the recent champion, itong season 86 of La Salle, was very good. Uh, they have they had Kevin Kiambao, they have Evan Nelly, they had Mike Phillips. And then after that, we see a huge drop-off. Uh, we don't know who will step up, 
we don't know who will be the X factor for the game. These three players basically led this team to the finals. Uh, I would say that si Kevin Chambao and Evan Nelly level of importance we saw during this season. And uh, just the level of depth uh, ng team, I think that, that that season 79 DLSU team is was very deep. deep. They should have swept that season. Uh, I don't know how Ateneo won one game uh, and prevented them from getting that sweep. Uh, but this is one of the best UAP teams in history, so I would have to, to agree with them. I would go with the Ben and Bala led Lasal during season 79. And just to add, uh, I think this is a bad matchup for the season 86 Green Archers because the season 79 mm -hmm. Green Archers actually played a very similar style to how the season 86 Green Archers played. You know, the pressing, the mayhem offense and defense of Adrian yeah. Ayo yeah. is Coach very, Ayo. very similar to how Coach Topex was playing LaSalle for most of season 86. About the, the run and gun style, a lot of outside shooting, pre you a lot of full court pressure. That was how Alden Ayo played this LaSalle team. And when you play the same game, I think the more talented team obviously wins out. So I, I, I so the season 79 new Green Archers will I will I think have the upper hand on this matchup. Sami. Uh oh okay, sige. So for me, if I think it was just a bad matchup. Tama ka ka. Kasi if I look at the season 86 team and compared to the other championship teams, I think they can match up well. Um, you have the one of the best, if not one of the best Filipino UAAP players ever na already in KQ. Just after two seasons. I don't even think this is his peak. Pero you already have one of the best local talents in the UAAP ever. Uh, and you have a very big lineup with like Sina Mike Phillips, Raven Cortez, etc. But as you mentioned, Gab, this this season 79 team can match up well and it's just so, 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 so stacked. As in, crazy stacked. You, you can just look at yung big three pa lang. Just compare the big three. Embala, Rivero, Teng. And we're talking about Jeron Teng um, in his probably final season. And I think yung one of the most underrated things about Teng that maybe you didn't mention, Gab, was during his final season, one of the things that people complained about Teng was he doesn't pass a lot. But during his final season, he sort of learned to play make uh, because he was with so many talented players already. So he was really playing making because a lot had, in final season. Because he had the greatest love threat in UAAP love. history in Ben and Barbara. And Richie Rivero who was just this scoring threat nung rookie, I think rookie season niya to, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, his, so, his rookie season. Uh, I have to say unanimous to, it has to be season the season 89 DLSU Green Archers. Malas na lang, sorry, season 86. 79, Sam. Ah, 79, yeah. sorry. I'm, sorry, KQ. Namatch kayo kay Ben Mbala. I, Rumawi, sorry, just, to, just to finalize that, I think this is also one of the main reasons why si Robert Pollock transferred to to the NCA, di ba? Kasi kikintig na mo yung guard rotation ng Lasal Jr. Hindi siya makapasok, hindi siya makalala. You, know, you have Milesio, you have Karakut, you have uh, si, Tyre, to, si Torres. The, the backboard is just yeah. too stuck, di ba? Montalvo. Montalvo was... Even si Jologo, who was a star during his, uh, I think, nung Batang Gilas days, had to play limited minutes because of this lineup. Uh, it's just too strong, yung, yung guard rotation. And I think this is one of the reasons that prompted Robert Bolling to transfer to San Beda and uh, the rest is history as we know it. Okay, so unanimous vote. It's going to be season 79 DLSU versus over season 86. Gab, where do we go next? Next bracket natin will be season 78 FU Tamaraus and season 85 Ateneo Blue Eagles. So the previous season's champions. Uh, the last champion na hindi Ateneo, Lasal, or UP. The season 78 FEU Tamaros, Maui. Can you briefly ex ano, share with us ano yung team na to? What was, what, what's all about? How did this team win the championship? Maui, you're on mute. 
Na- Nakamute ka, Maui. Nakamute ka, Maui. Yeah, sorry. Uh, this uh, season, 78 finals was, again, was FPU and UST during the finals. Uh, FPU had its big three. Uh, Pogoy, Tolomia, and uh, and uh, si Mac Bello. Basically, Mac Bello. They, also had, they also had Ray Mar Jose. They had the Escoto brothers, Russell, Russell and Richard. They had Barkley Ibonia. They had Comboy. They, they had Denison. So, so this team was a very stacked team. Uh, this is probably one of the last FEU teams that was very relevant to UAP. This was a true contender. And I think uh, this was not their only final appearance, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is the team that was also beaten by the NU, I think, to win the championship, the Basa one season. Uh, yes. This is prime Mac Belo, prime RR Pogoy, prime Tolomia during the during during the UAP careers, and they won that championship against a UST team that was very good also. I think this is one of the last years also of Karim Abdul. So they went up against Karim Abdul, uh, Dakiwag, Kevin Ferrer, Louis Vigil, Ayang Subido. Uh, and if you guys remember, si Marvin Lee, yung sharp, sharp shooter ng, ng UST during that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a very young Zach Wang, Bon Leon, and uh, si Sheriff, one of the FX8. I think he was one of the Phil Ams, na, na small Phil Ams that we've seen sa UAAP. So that was basically yung season 88 team. Uh, the, the last time that Assam so the last 78. 78, sorry. Season 78 team, the last time that uh, a non, a not, 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 eh, not Ateneo, Lasal or UP won the, the championship. Uh, so that was a different time. Uh, I can't believe that it's been that long since uh, FPU has been a contender. Oh. <laughs> Grabe naman, Mau. Um, now you make us all feel old. <laughs> it's been that long na parang natin tong season 78 FE. <laughs> Sam, go ahead. Why don't you go first, Sam? Who's your pick? Uh, okay, so my pick for this one, again, season 85 Ateneo. I am, as much as I want another team to make it to the next round, I have to go with Ateneo here. It's just, for me, size number one. Size ng Ateneo with Ange Kwame, season 85. Ah? We're talking about season 85. Ange Kwame in his final year. We have Kai Balungay. Tapos we have guys like sina Fortsky coming in na hindi na siya yung rookie na medyo bangku pa nung previous season na Fortsky. Fortsky was very solid for Ateneo during that team. You also had Guys like David Aldefonso, Chris Kuhn. Uh, I just think with the size of Ateneo and the way they play more modern basketball versus nung time ng FEU na to, um, I would have to pick Ateneo over FEU. Though I have to say na I think the guards of FEU were, were also very talented nung time na to. Kasi si Roger Pogoy, um, Mike Tolomia, Roger Pugoy was a two-way point guard. Tapos, uh, I think, Maui, I don't know mention mo siya. Si Denison, one of the most, yeah. the peskiest defenders nung time na yon. Not his best With year, the most annoying face neto. of all time. True. Uh, but <laughs> Pat Beverly ng UAEP yan. Patrick Beverly, magandang comparison yun. So, uh, medyo mahirap yung ano yung guard combination na yun or guard lineup na yun. Mahirapan si na Fortsky but I, I still have to pick Ange Kwame and Kai Balungay, Chris Kuhn. Just, okay. for me, it's a bigger team and some more talented Ateneo team. Okay. Yeah. Before we go to Maui, I'll go first Maui because I have a different pick than Sam. So, ikaw yung maging tiebreaker natin. I'm okay. going with the season okay. 78. Okay. I'm going with the season 78 FU Tamaraus. Now, I think some you're forgetting that this team had Prince Orizu, who was himself six foot ten, as tall as Ange Kwame. So okay, okay. I would not uh I would not discount the size of FU uh right then and there. Now, Prince Orizu is not the same level of an Ange Kwame. I think exactly that's pretty much. Yes, I think, yes, I but I think. FEU just had a more veteran and well-rounded and deeper team than this than this season 85 Ateneo Blue Eagles. If you remember season 85, this was the team that 
had no bench. Diba? Throughout the, fir- the first round, when whenever Tab Baldwin would put in their bench, led by point guard Chris Kuhn, the game would slip point out of Ateneo's hand. Oh, yes, yes. Point if you remember point that. Guard Chris Kuhn. Ateneo's offense and defense would fall off a cliff whenever the bench came in. So the adjustment was made in the second round and leading into the finals that two of the starters would always be on the court with the bench every time because Ateneo, their bench just sucked. And I think if you put them up against this FEU team, as deep as this FEU team was, if you, if you guys remember, R.R. Pogoy and Mac Bello were coming off the bench for this FEU team. They were not starting Mac Bello and R.R. Pogoy. In many of their games, this is a coach. Pareho silang off the bench? Yeah, no, not always. But Coach Nash, this this is a Coach Nash Rosella uh, classic. You know, he he, he loves to put his starters coming off the bench. Sila Mike Tolomnia would come off the bench. I think he would start sina Wendell Comboy uh, as the starters. Then then bring off sina Mike Tolomnia, sina R.R. Pogoy, yung coming off the bench. And just... Uh, I don't think Kai Balungay is gonna match up well with the likes of a Mac Bello or a Raymar Jose. We've seen you have Kai David Balungay. Alfonso. You have David Alfonso yeah. or Chris Kuhn. Yeah, we have our, our Pugoy. Hindi naman si Balungay magmamatch up. No, 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 no. Mac Bello was playing power forward for this team. Not, not, he was not on the perimeter. He was gonna match up with the uh, Kai Balungay. And I think... Uh, I watched Mac Bello live and I've never been so amazed to watch a player aside from Troy Rosario back in One that day. One of the best FU of... players ever. Yes. We, we we called him in our FEU draft, Sam. He was Arwin Santos reincarnated. The closest thing to yeah. an Arwin Santos that FEU ever had. And knowing how much Kai Balungay does not do well with contact, this FEU team is gonna eat Kai Balungay alive. I'm sorry. Raymar Jose, uh, Russell Escoto, Richard Escoto, uh, Mac Bello, they're gonna eat Kai Balungay. There was no depth behind Gio Kai Chuga. Balungay. Two day. Gio Chu. Oh. oh, please. <laughs> please. No way. Barkley Ebonia is gonna run circles around Gio Chu. I'm sorry. I love Gio Chu, but there's no way he's gonna match up well with this FEU front line. And remember, just with- Mag- maganda yung season ni Gio Chu sa 85. Ha? It wasn't like 86. He had one good game in game three, Sam. One good game. <laughs> that was the finals. Even in- <laughs> so, I'm picking the season 78 FEU Tamaraos here. Uh, as much as I think in this matchup, you had the best player coming from Ateneo and Ange Kwame. But I, but I think this is a case of them going up against a better team in the season 78 FEU Tamaraos. I love this FEU Tamaraos team. They're so deep. A bunch of pros coming from this FEU Tamaro team. A bunch of Gilas players. And let's not forget that Mike Tolomia was a bucket. <laughs> Mike Tolomia was a bucket. This guy could shoot, could penetrate. Uh, he would be a problem against the likes of a Gab Gomez and, and a Fortsky Padrigao. Plus, they had a ton of shooters. Ed Bello is the Ateneo killer. He's, he he, he like had multiple buzzer beaters against Ateneo. <laughs> so... So I am going for the FEU Tamaraos here. I think they're a much deeper team. They're a better overall, a more veteran team than this That's Ateneo true. Blue Eagles That's team. True. That's true. Yeah. So, Maui, ikaw ang tie Yeah. I don't want to be biased, pero I have to go with Ateneo. I remember kasi back in the day, I was watching in Araneta, and Ange Kwame had 33 points and 27 rebounds. A, a stat line like that against an FEU team. Uh, you might say that probably Prince Orizu was injured in the first quarter. Kaya, kaya he had that big game. But that's the problem. Uh, I think that's the problem. Uh, if if Orizu goes into foul trouble against Ateneo, then it's game over already for, for FEU. That's why I think that this Ateneo team will be able to easily defeat this FEU championship team. And uh, I think I have to agree with Sam. Uh, you're talking about a mismatch with Mac Bello uh, and Kai Balungay. 
but it's also a mismatch on the other end of the floor. Uh, I think that Kai Balungay with his size and athleticism could match up pretty well with, with Mac Bello. It's a different time. Uh, we used to have 6'4", 6'3", power forwards during that time. During Kai Balungay's time, uh, we have players like Carl Tamayo. We have players like Kevin Kiambao, who is 6'5", can do everything. And uh, Kai Balungay is 6'7", and Mac Bello is 6'4". So I think that with Anj Kwame also to protect the paint, if Mac Bello somehow beats Kai Balungay off the dribble, and Anj Kwame is there, then definitely you know what will happen. Uh, I mean, we saw Anj Kwame for four seasons at Ateneo. Uh, this is peak Anj Kwame, despite the injury, diba? This is Anj Kwame, a lineup uh, that Ateneo was able to use to beat a lineup with UST, uh, with UPs. Malik the youth. Uh, this season 80, 85 Ateneo. Uh, maybe we get beat uh, on the guard rotation, but I just think that we have Edel Poncho to match up also with Pogoy. Uh, it's just your front court is just too much for, for FEU to handle, in my opinion. Uh, this is also a Prince Orizu na very young. Uh, this is not the Prince Orizu that we that Anj Kwame faced nung na injure siya nung season 85 uh season 81 uh, i just remember a young young Ange Kwame eating the FEU team alive no no season 81 uh so i have to pick ateneo uh sorry for FEU but this is this is why this is why we want FEU to contend i just have to say uh FEU is a different monster when they contend also uh this is speak also Rasela FEU this is a team that went to the finals to Two seasons at the minimum, uh, in, in my in my opinion, in, if I remember correctly. So, but I have to pick season eighty five Ateneo. Uh, I just think that this team has that dog in them uh, after losing to to UP in season eighty four. Okay, let this be known that I did not pick an Ateneo team to win in one of these matchups. Ah, huh? I wanted <laughs> season seventy eight FEU in there. I thought they were. Mo- I love the season 85 Blue Eagles. I watched them. I watched them uh, have one of the more most underrated championships, one of the best championships I ever saw, going up a stack, going up against a stack UP team. But I wanted the season 78. If just let it be known, I picked a team outside of Ateneo. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so comment lang, comment lang dito is. Um, I agree naman with what you said, Gap. Mas, I think it, if you had a deeper and a more experienced lineup, um, actually, well, we haven't gone through the other teams, but I think these two teams yung medyo, I would rate lower compared to the other bracket. So this was a good matchup for me, actually. Um, I, I don't fully disagree with your arguments, to be honest. Okay, let's move on to the next. So for our subscribers and those watching, comment down below. See if you agree with me or oh, with the two of these oh. Ateneo through my blue-blooded na ayo mag-vote against Ateneo. Excuse Let me. Let me know if you agree Excuse with me. me if if FEU. <laughs> Excuse me. In this next bracket, may Ateneo akong hindi pipiliin. So don't <laughs> at me. What? Don't at me. May Ateneo team ako hindi pipiliin in the next bracket. Um, speaking of the next bracket, it's Ateneo versus Ateneo. Again, guys, three out of four. Kami... Ateneo sa next bracket. Wow. Uh, three out of four. So again, guys, hindi... we just looked at the last eight champions. We randomized the rank, the the order. So, um, hindi namin to ginusto. Hindi namin to pinili. But it is what it is. And it's the two Back to back champions, no. So this is season eighty, season Ateneo, season eighty one, Ateneo Blue Eagles. Maui, can you tell us more about these two teams? Ano ba yung difference nito? Kasi if you look at the roster, very, very, very similar. So how do we, how do we choose? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think the main difference lang is si Anj Kwame na yung season 80, 81 and si, and si Ike yung season eighty. Uh, if you look at the lineup, I think in season 80, si Tolentino pa. But season 81, it was now Will Navarro starting at, at power forward. Uh, but 
But basically, if you were to ask me, uh, so I will have to, I will go first. Then. If you were to yes, ask yes. me, this is a very, very, I, I have to be very direct, and this is a very easy answer for me. Uh, it's Kwame over Ike, so definitely season 81 has to go through. Uh, despite that Hail Mary team in season 80, uh, I think of all the championship, championships of Ateneo during that top Baldwin era, I would have to rank you season 80 as one of the sweetest, uh, in my opinion, because this is a team that beat Embala, Embala uh, with only with, without Kwame and with Ike. Uh, the by original B E B O B ng Ateneo. This is this was it. If you're talking about that, but uh, very straightforward, uh, Kwame over EK. So season 81 has to go through for me. Gab, what's up? Well, ako, it was not just oh, Kwame over EK, but you're looking at better versions of the likes of Thirdy Ravenna, Matt Nieto, Mike Nieto, Anton Asistio, Isaac Go, and this is a, a better overall team compared to the season 80 Blue Eagles. And yes, as Maui said, it's Ange Kwame. And there's no way, I'm sorry to Chib to Chibuese EK, he's had one of my favorite dunks of all time when he screamed at the ball after dunking it off a pass from Anton Asistio in that gig game three of the finals against Ben Mbala. But yeah, uh, the season 81 Blue Eagles were, were just a better overall team than the season 80 Blue Eagles. I mean, they were... 30 was better. Yung, this was the dawn of finals 30 against the UP fighting Maroons. Okay, start. If you remember. Oh, it's start ng finals yeah. 30. Tama si Gab. This was finals 30. Uh, had what? I think had 38 points uh, in game two of the finals against uh, UP. Just an absolute beast. He he came into his own in season 81. Season 80 was like uh, a team championship. He was not putting up the numbers as you as he usually did in the in the elimination round and he would did not have big games in the finals but season 81 30 was a beast you know, i mean he knew that no one could stop him in, in the uaap and plus he had Kwame with him so he's 81 easily sami oi i'm going with the season 80 team if tinanong nyo sa akin ano yung favorite championship ko Kasi, as Maui mentioned, that was the sweetest championship. But no questions asked dito because we're looking at the yeah, best yeah. team. Season 81 team tayo. No more, no more discussions. Like, I don't... I For me, again, it's season Mary 80 team, my right? favorite championship. My favorite championship. Similar to season 85 na both for me underdog teams yung nanalo. But this one was again sa Ben and Bala team. But definitely, I agree with everything you guys said. You have to pick the bet, the Ansh Kwame led, more improved version of 30 team. No questions asked. Let's move on to the next round para matapos na natin yung first round. Um, sorry. Uh, I will add. Okay. The final two teams head to head, the UP Fighting Maroons versus the Ateneo Blue Eagles. So this is the championship, the in the first championship of UP in like 30 plus years versus season 82 Ateneo Blue Eagles, the last team prior to the pandemic. Um, Maui, briefly talk about these two teams before uh, we discuss our picks. Yeah, uh, so your season 82 team ng Ateneo, that is the final year ng, ng core ng BEBOB ng Ateneo, which is made up of Ravenna, uh, Gio, uh, sorry, Isaac Go, the Nieto, the Nieto brothers. So basically, this is the peak Ateneo Blue Eagles. I would say this is the peak Tab Baldwin-led Ateneo Blue Eagles. This is the best team, in my opinion, ng, ng Ateneo under Tab Baldwin. Uh, this is also an Ange Kwame na hindi injured uh, prior to season 85. Uh, I think in season 84, meron na rin. Uh, but this is the peak Ateneo team. When you talk about UP, uh, this is the nowhere but up. I think this is the team that really when UP really exploded uh, in the UAP scene, this is when they won their first chip in, as Sam mentioned, since uh, the first time since si Ronnie Magsanok and si, si Papa Bear, si, <laughs> si Benji Paras. So, uh, basically, it's the same team. Uh, it's Tamayo, Lucero, Richie Rivero, Cancino, Spencer, Abadiano, Diouf, and uh, Henry Galinato. This was Henry Galinato's uh, no, entry to the UAP. It wasn't here, Maui. 
Wala, wala. Wala si Galinato niyan. Wala si Galinato. Uh, well, yeah. Wala, 84. Doon siya sa season 85. Uh, sa 85 Wait, one, one and done. One and done si Galinato. One and done. One and done si Galinato. Yes, yeah. season 85 siya. Okay, okay. So, yeah. this was peak Losero. This was peak Losero yes. for UP. I think you guys have to agree, di ba? Kasi yung Losero ng, ng season 85, basta sa Losero, that was injured nung finals, na ACL siya. Nung finals, uh, so... This is peak uh, Zeb Losero. Uh, by the way, I just have to mention that I'm happy that Losero is back to playing basketball. He's back in the PBA. Back and he, had, he has been playing very well uh, sa first few games niya. Gap, you go first. Sige. Uh, to, to me, I think this is probably the closest matchup aside from the yeah. EU and the 85 yeah. uh, Blue I Eagles. Agree. However, I do think that the season 82 Blue Eagles were just, as, as Maui said, ito na yung final e, yung evolution eh. Like, kung Pokemon ka, ito na yung peak eh. Ito uh, na yung last evolution mo. It's si Charizard ka na. Si Charizard na yung season 82 at na yung Blue Eagles. And this team was just playing on a whole other level. They were top one, I think, <laughs> in defense by a mile against the competition and, and I think they were number two or I think also top one on offense for the entire season went 16 and oh not a single team could even keep close to them uh they were they were just so dominant and as much as season 84 Mar- fighting Maroons had Malik Duf which was the closest thing we had to Ange Kwame, to, to match up to an Ange Kwame I just think this season uh 82 team which had Still had the peak of Thirdy Ravenna, and I I don't think any even if Zave Lucero was there as athletic as he was, I don't think he was stopping the likes of a Thirdy Ravenna. And Mike Nieto, Matt Nieto was still there, backed up by an SJ Belangel and the Tyler Tio, and you had uh, Will Navarro. This this Ateneo Blue Eagle team, uh, I I think would 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 beat UP in a close game. Because I think this UP fighting Manusing was still talented, was still stuck. They had JD, they had Carl Tomayo, they had Richie, uh, they had CJ Cancino, um, Zave Lucero, as, as Maui said. And uh, their backup center, Maui, was Bismarck Lina. So right before si Henry Galinato, si, si, si Bismarck Lina was the one who was backing up Malik Diouf. But yeah, uh, I think this would be a close game. You would see the head-to-head matchup of Ange Kwame and, and Malik Juf again. But I think the the season 84 at the name of Blue Eagles, who did not have the Nieto brothers, did not have Sina Adrian Wong and Young and Thirdy Ravenna, I think were a much uh, lower talented team compared to the season 82 at the name of Blue Eagles, which was, I mean, this team was the final evolution of. The, the Tab Baldwin uh, uh, team right? to start the Tab Baldwin era. So, uh, season 82, Antonio Blue Eagles all the way. Sam or Maui, does any one of uh, you have another pick aside, aside from season yeah. 82 before we go? Okay. I'll go Sam. first. I'll go first. So, I agree with Gab. I think this is one of the closest matchups ever. And I don't think picking Ateneo is the wrong pick. But I, I sort of want to swerve lang then here. So I'm actually going with the season 84 UP Fighting Maroons. And wag niyo sabihin na homer ako. But um, tinitignan ko lang yung lineup because you mentioned, Gab, na yung season 84 Ateneo wasn't as good, as good as 82. But I thought season 84 Ateneo was also, was supposed to like sweep sweep the UAAP and win another championship. Because that was the MVP season of Ange Kwame, number one. You mentioned the point guards of season 82, Ateneo. You had like three, di ba? Belangel, Anieto, Belangel, Tio. Season 84, Ateneo also had Belangel, Tio. And the third string point guard was Fortsky Padrigao, uh, na who was playing limited minutes lang, but was actually very good. Um, you have... You know, the, the size of like guys like David Defonso, Chris Kuhn. Um, I think BJ Andrade was also in season 84, who was 
and this was like medyo peak or good BJ Andrade na hindi pa siya hindi yung injury prone na BJ Andrade in the past so I I feel like sorry I, pinag-usapan ko na yung 84 Ateneo di ba but I feel like UP beating season 84 Ateneo just showed me na this team has the talent and um the lineup to really beat like a good team like season 82 Ateneo. And sa totoo lang, I wish I can see this lineup kasi it would be really interesting to see these two teams go head to head. Um, If you look at UP, Malik Diof yun nga, can match up with Ansh Kwame. Um, you, you do have a Carl Tamayo who's like a 6'7", 6'7", power forward that can handle the ball, score multiple ways. Sino magma-match up sa kanya sa season 82 si third sa season 82 Ateneo si 30 ba? You all you mentioned Navarro. Ka, I think this is the Navarro will match up. Will Navarro, Will Navarro. We will uh, Navarro. Forward. Uh, Very good size. Was, yeah, but smaller than Carl Tamayo, ba? And then I think the the one key guy that the season 85 UP missed dito sa sa lineup na to was Richie Rivero who maybe it's not the most prolific scoring Richie Rivero, but he he was really very crucial to this UP team, especially in the finals. See, Richie Rivero was very crucial. And then you add to that Zave Lucero, another 6'7 athletic guy that can, you know, play small ball with Carl Tamayo or um, switch uh, switch with, play a big lineup with Tamayo, with um, Diouf. So, just the size, the athleticism of UP, and then the guards. JD Kagulangan, CJ Cancino, Spencer. You talk about Ateneo killers, Mac Bello. These three guys just killed this season 84 Ateneo team. Um, Spencer specifically, ilang game-winning, game-tying three-pointers yung nagawa ni Spencer. And this is peak Spencer. I remember nung nag si Spencer in 30, Spencer would guard, guard 30 and wala, kain na kain si Spencer. But this is peak Spencer. I think he can match up well with um, a strong big guy like 30. Uh, so, you know, again, like, I... And then you add the other guys, the ba? Like, sina... Um, Portea, Jerry Abadiano, another pesky defender. So I think yung depth din ng... May, I think both teams have depth. Both teams have talent. I I'm not gonna argue with your pick, Gab, but I I feel like underrated din tong UP team, and I think they can challenge. If there's a team that can challenge this season 82 Ateneo, I think it's season 84 UP. Oh, I would have to, despite wearing maroon, uh, the Boleros T-shirt maroon. <laughs> oh, uh, I would no, have to be vehemently. Disagree with Sam on this matter. Uh, 16 and go 0, ahead, one of the that. best teams in UAAP history, the last team to sweep it. Peak Ravenna, peak Nieto, peak Isaac Go. Uh, I don't think that any team uh, could have beaten this team. Uh, you probably get a preview of what will happen to my bracket the rest of the way, but this team is one of the best UAAP teams in history. Uh, 30 Ravenna is on another level. This is the reason why why Filipinos now have a chance to play abroad. Uh, the play of, of, of Ravenna during this during the past season was one of the main reasons why Filipinos now have that opportunity to play abroad. Uh, I don't think I think some you're underestimating this team. Uh, this team uh, when also when they also played for our national team, Yung Gilas, match up pretty well with the Serbian national team. Diba? They almost beat a team uh, with Marjanovic as one of the players playing. Uh, I just think that this is peak Ateneo, peak top Baldwin Ateneo. There's a reason why this team went 16-0. There's a reason why uh, there's a reason why Gab mentioned that this team is top in both defense and offense. Uh, UP Yung, yung season, the, the, the following season, yun, eh, no? yung season 84 UP barely beat yung 13 and 1 Ateneo. Uh, that UP team, which won the championship, was a Hail Mary team for UP. If you remember yung final game, uh, they had to hit a ton of shots na out of this world uh, to, to win that championship. Uh, that was really a Hail Mary team for UP. 
and I don't think that team could have that thirteen one Ateneo team was could could easily lose to this 14, 16 and zero Ateneo team. Uh, I just think that this is one of the best teams in UAP history. So I would have to side with Gab uh, Ateneo season eighty two definitely. Uh, I can't argue with that. Pero one thing that I will say, ha, that I think we have to give to the season eighty four teams in general moving forward. Remember, this is the team that started playing right after the COVID. And one of the main complaints ng mga teams is they barely got practice. They barely got to um, prepare for season eighty four. So I think, um, I think yung season eighty four UP team na to. If you look at it, when they started out, hindi maganda yung start nila. And they sort of peaked in the finals. Though it was a miracle win, I, I think hindi natin nakita yung peak talaga or the best that this UP team could have done in that season. Good point, Sam. Good not point. All, all the teams couldn't prepare for it. So not like this. I th- Which, you know, I will give to Ateneo, di ba? Itong, as you guys mentioned, itong season 82 Ateneo kasi is basically... Three years in the making. Your season eighty two Ateneo na talagang they really know you, each other. The final they evolution. The final, final evolution, evolution exactly. right? So I think that's the unfair level. advantage of this season eighty two team. Um, but yon. So I just wanted to put that out there. Then. Okay, moving on, Gam. Uh, so let's move on to the next round. Quick recap: We have Lasal Ateneo, Ateneo, and Ateneo. So tatlong Ateneo versus one Lasal. Uh, I wanted FEU in there. I wanted FEU in there. You guys think too highly of that season 85 team. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Now that I think then, about it. Huh? Iba- imagine mo. Imagine mo, Sams. That season 85 team was able to beat a season 84 UP team na very similar naman sa lineup nila. Di ba? I mean, De, the Mau, season 84 Mau, UP wala. was season 85. Sino? Wala si Richie, tapos injured si Zave. So yun yung argument ko, like, if they had a healthy Zave Lucero, they could have, ano, they could have repeated, I think. Well, well anyway, MCG let the people pala, decide. MCG, MCG, MCG. But, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Let so the people decide if FEU deserve. At look, Ateneo teams nandito, what a homer podcast this is. <laughs> let the people decide. Let's move on to Lasal versus Ateneo season 79 versus season 85. Alam na natin yung teams and I think this is going to be based on the initial dis- discussions. This is going to be an easy pick. Let's start with you Maui. Sino ang pick mo? Lasal versus Ateneo. Yeah, I'd have to pick Lasal. Uh this is Embala against Kwame. We never saw this easy. in UAP. But we're talking about season 85 Kwame. Uh Kwame who was hampered by a knee injury the whole season, diba? This is a team that barely won the championship against UP, as Sam mentioned. Uh, maybe if Lucero did that Terry's ACL, maybe it would, have, it would have been a different story. But this is a LaSalle team who was very hungry to get a championship. Uh, definitely LaSalle pick for this one. Uh, oh, I agree with Maui. Uh, again, I, th- I think you guys think too highly of the Season 85 team. The Season 85 team was top five at most. And then dr- yung drop off yung the rest of the lineup, and but this season seventy nine archers man, the, they had no drop off from the top five. The, the next five were just as good. <laughs> so uh, and they had Ben and Bala, the most imposing force ever to grace a UAP floor. I I still I still get nightmares from remembering a guy like Ben and Bala watching him against the Ateneo Blue Eagles was one of the scariest things ever because this guy was huge, he was dominant, and he was hungry. He would guard perimeter players handily. Coach Alden Aya would put him at the top of the press, not behind the press, the top of the press because he was that athletically imposing and that fast and that skilled. And yeah, this season, we said it, but... I don't think anyone on the season 85 Ateneo Blue Eagles team, not BJ Andrade, not Dave Defonso, not even Chris Kuhn, can stop the likes of a Jaron thing. I mean, Jaron was was a beast. Yeah, he's he's way bigger than than those three wing players that Ateneo had. And yeah, I mean, even Jason Perkins would make mincemeat out of 
Kai Balungay. I'm sorry, Kai. You struggle against physical players, and there is no other physical, more physical player than the hefty lefty in Jason Perkins. And not to mention this Prince Severo coming off the bench and 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 a bootrater. So yeah, I, I think handily the season 79 Green Archers would beat the season 85 Blue Eagles. Sammy. Mayhem over Bad B B Bob. Mayhem over B Bob on this one. Um Ben Mbala at this time, uh, the best player overall and arguably the best FSA. So it's, I'm going with Lasal, going straight to the finals here. Next, uh, let's go Ateneo versus Ateneo, season 81 versus season 82. Ito sobrang similar na neto Maui. So um, I think I know where you guys are had, going here. They had but... like two positions <laughs> different. I mean, the only difference was, I think, uh, see, si, I don't know, CC had graduated. So it's now Adrian Wong starting. And Rafi Verano was in season 82. Yeah, Rafi Verano uh, was not in season 82, uh, yeah. replaced by Will Navarro. But they had Pat Magdenberg coming off the bench Mag in season 82. Yeah, Magdenberg. Magdenberg. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think, Maui. Oh, Maui, go. Maui. I think si Gab uh, was already able to give you one of your explanation why, why I would pick the season 82 Eagles over season 81. The season 82 Eagles is the complete evolution of the main uh, star players, which is Ravenna, the Nieto brothers, and Isaac Go. Uh, si Adrian Wong was also transitioned to, to probably one of the best wings. With three and D players sa Ateneo during this season. Uh, I just have to say that uh, 16 and 0. Yun lang. Again, diba? I have to say 16 and 0. 16 and 0 team. Diba? They handily defeated everyone. Nobody was even close. Nung 16 and 0 season. Uh, even UST as a fourth seed went to the finals. So very huge yung gap ng, ng team na to to any team uh, during that season. And I think that's because they were able to build up on that season 81 championship team who went 12 and 2 and then uh, beat that UP team. Uh, so definitely season 82, Blue Eagles in the finals for me. Gab. Sam. I think you know my answer already for this. It's just season 82 Blue Eagles. I mean, they were the same players, but only better from season 81. So final evolution. <laughs> talaga, eh, no? The final evolution. I don't think you final evolution. Anyone tama. would have an argument for the season 81 yeah. Blue Eagles over the season 82. Sami, they have a Para different take. I think this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, yun yun final evolution. Ina imagine ko na eh, si Charizard versus si Charmander eh. Alam mo yun, yung final evolution wala, malayo. May Belangel pa. So, diba? Sa season 82. Belangel 82. Si Tio was even getting, getting that many minutes. Wait. Yeah. Wait lang. I'm sorry. Uh, in yung in a normal podcast, in normal conversation, I yung, I would let this pass. Pero Sami Si Charmander yung first. May second evolution si Charizard. Ay, Charmillion Charizard. pala. Charmillion, sorry. Charmillion! Charmillion. Oh, talaga. Mga... No, Charmillion, sorry. Charmillion. Mga galit yung mga Pokemon ko. fans, eh. Chill na lang. Oh, si Sam. Blast Boys, 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 na lang. Oh. oh. Nalilito si Sam sa season 82 at 81 kasi oh, very similar. Oh, eh. Ito na sa evolution. Oh, eh. Let's go to the final. Ay, wala pa pala. Hindi pa pala updated. Ito talaga si Gab. Oh. But... Ito na, ito, I think this is going to be a good discussion or good debate. Final lineup, final battle is going to be, guess what? La Salle versus Ateneo. Um, the biggest rivalry in UAAP history, La Salle versus Ateneo. The matchup. This is the dream. We always wanted, dream but matchup, never got. Correct, yeah. correct. This is the dream matchup. Yes. If you haven't seen, if you haven't seen our previous episode, we talked about, we debated Anj Kwame versus Ben Mbalas, the two best FSAs. This is it. This is the dream matchup. The best Ben Mbala team versus the best Anj Kwame team. Who will win? That's the question. Let's start with Maui. Oh, very simple lang. Uh, 16 and 0. Uh, <laughs> I have to go with the 16 and 0 team. <laughs> diba? 
Dal Asalt, to my defense, to my defense, Dal Asalt, Dal Asalt team season 79 team was beaten by an Ateneo team. Diba? With Chihuezo Ike as a starting center. Uh, this is peak Ateneo. Uh, yung season 79 team ng Ateneo was the first year of Tab Baldwin. Uh, and they almost beat La Salle in game one of the finals, if you if you remember. Uh, it was just Jerome Teng hitting that game-winning shot ng game one ng finals. Uh, but we're getting a season. Uh, peak Ravenna, peak Nieto. Peak, I've been saying this the whole episode this is the final evolution, diba? This is the best top Baldwin team that, that we have uh, in, the, in the history of top Baldwin and the Ateneo. Uh, this team, as I've mentioned, when they trained nung two months uh, in Laguna before that FIBA, FIBA last chance qualifiers, was able to go hand toe-to-toe against a Serbian team which is ranked top 10 in the world. Uh, that I think that speaks volumes on how strong and how... Uh, how season this team was. Uh, they had three years already with Tab Baldwin, the same core of Ateneo. I think that's the peak Ateneo, the team that gets the most time with Tab Baldwin. Uh, we never saw Ange Kwame versus Ben Mbala. Uh, I think I picked Ange Kwame over Ben Mbala as the best FSA yung, during our episode before uh, si Gab pick Mbala. So I have to, to go with my boy, Ange Kwame. Uh, I will pick Ateneo as the best team to win the championship the past eight season, eight seasons. There's a reason why this team wait, went 14-0. There's a reason why the team that was led by Enzo Kwame the following season went 13-1 and uh, and unfortunately lost to UP. But this was just a dominant team against Tab Baldwin. Uh, this, both teams have very similar makeup, very deep. Probably the majority of the lineup went to the pros. Uh, but I have to pick this team. Uh, this is the, the team that opened the doors to all Filipinos to play abroad. Uh, Gab. Okay. Very interesting because we had this argument before. So as, uh, as Sami said, if you haven't watched our debate last year on Anj Kwame versus Ben Mbala, I was the only one who talked Ben Mbala. And I'm standing by my decision. I am taking, as much as I love Ateneo, I love the season 82 Ateneo Blue Eagles. They were so dominant. But the season 79, Green Archers take it for me. This team, led by Ben Mbala, was, I don't know, uh, the most dominant team I had ever seen in the UAAP. And uh, I think we, as I said, you know, uh, people always say, oh, Tab Baldwin beat Ben Mbala, right? Uh, they beat Ben Mbala led Lasal in season eighty one, uh, in, in 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 season eighty. Yeah, but the, Ben Mbala did not have Jerome Tang and Jason Perkins. That's those are pretty key players, and I and I really think that uh, the overall makeup, the hunger of this De La Salle team, and I, I as much as I love Ange, and I think Ange is the best defensive player we've ever seen in the UAP. I think Ben Mbala would give him a run for his money. Despite how how uh, lacking in height he is compared to Ange, Ben's power, his athleticism, I think would would just overpower Ange. I, uh, I, I really think that. I really, really, really believe that. It is not just sake for uh, for me uh, picking another, aside from uh, Ateneo team, I'm picking the, the opponent. But I really believe that this De La Salle, Green Arches team was peak Lasal. Just the peak of all the Lasal teams I've seen over the years. This was the team that I really believe that uh, on, yung, on any good day, in, in, in any one game matchup, you cannot beat this team with 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 Ben Mbala and you and Jeron Teng. And I'm sorry, not even 3D can stop Jeron Teng. Not even this season 82 3D. I, I, I really believe that Jeron in his final year. This is the final evolution of Jeron Teng. As Sami said, he was not just a scorer. He was a facilitator. He was a defender. He was an all-around player. And despite his inconsistent shot, he could shoot it. Uh, I do remember one of the key shots in game one of the finals in season 79 was Jeron Teng hitting a three over, I think it was Aaron Black who fouled him. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, this... Green Archers team, I'm 
I'm going with them. They're the best team I've seen in the past eight seasons. Despite not sweeping, unlike the season 82 Blue Eagles, uh, the season 79 Archers were, I think, deeper. They played on a string. They were hungry. And I don't think you're getting past Ben and Balo once you get past their mayhem defense. Sami, tiebreaker. Let's go. Ang hirap nito. Ang hirap nito, guys. This is a really good matchup. Dream matchup talaga. Um, let me just point something out before sabihin ko yung answer ko. It's very interesting na the, the top two teams that we picked faced, um, had the same coaches, faced against, went against the same coaches. So, the LaSalle, season 79 LaSalle of Coach Alden Ayo was against the first year of Coach Tab Baldwin and natalo si Coach Tab Baldwin. The season 82 Ateneo faced UST during the first year Good I think, of Coach Alden Ayo <laughs> and natalo si Coach Alden Ayo. And um, I I just miss watching Coach Alden and Coach Tab go face to head to head then with the teams. And I think um, those were the top two theme, teams during those seasons. Uh, coming in to this debate, I also was going to pick Lasal, actually. Because I was gonna say na nobody could stop Ben Mbala, kahit sabihin mo si, nandun si Andrew Kwame, and si Jeron, Jeron Teng, um, which was, who was in his final season, di ba? Uh, looking at the lineup din, may isa pa akong nakita eh. Perkins, Perkins, Gab, you mentioned, I think this was also his final year. And because Sina Perkins were there, Tratter was there, Baltazar couldn't even play. Justin Baltazar, the, one of their star players during his final year. So, I was going to go with LaSalle. Pero, I have to... Oh, ask, no! Sam, Sam, Sam! Come on! Come on! Sam! Sort of convinced me. Kasi Sam! ko naisip yung argument ni Maui na natalo yung Lasal etong season 79 Lasal na to sa Ateneo sa season 79 Ateneo tinitingnan ko yung season 79 Ateneo yung first year ni Coach Tab it wasn't si Ike wasn't that good I remember Ike was really only good to great in his final season and I can't believe natalo yung season 79 so I was trying to, while Gab was talking, tinatayin ko i-research ano nangyari. I, I couldn't find it. So if anyone remembers, please comment down below ano nangyari doon. Kasi I couldn't believe it. Sa totoo lang. But because of that, and yung point ni Maui na 16 and 0, and Gab, you, uh, I think si Maui din nagsabi noon, or si Gab, top one in defense and offense yung season 82 Ateneo. I'm gonna have to swerve and I'm gonna pick season 82 Ateneo. And oh, spoiler Come alert! On. I picked Ange Kwame. Oh, so I picked Ange Kwame. The oh, only team yeah. in UAAP oh, history to sweep the season. The only team that had, uh, I mean, this team had a what? Uh, a 30 plus win streak diba? before UP won during the second round of season 84. Diba? You cannot argue so, with that, in my opinion. So, okay. Ito lang, ito lang ah. I have to agree sa akin, Maui. I think nobody can stop Ben Mbala. Kahit nandiyan si Ange Kwame. Because if we're just looking at yung best offensive player FSA, Ben Mbala. Most dominant FSA, Ben Mbala. The only reason, spoiler na naman, the only reason I picked Ange Kwame as the best FSA was because yung body of work niya all throughout the seasons. But individually, Ben Embala was a different beast. Ibang level. Put Ben Embala in any team. Holy shit. Holy shit. So, I really wanted to pick season 79. Pero, natalo siya kay Chibuezi Ike Gab. Sorry. Maui convinced me. Maui convinced me. Na... You had this preset. You nag nagedrama ka lang na gusto mo yung season seven to nine. Pinasa mo ako ng yara. Then the because I really wanted then, to pick Embale. I, I wanted. Chakano ah, I have to argue. No season eighty one. 
anong nung second season na kalaban ng Ateneo si Embala. They were able to to limit him to single figures during game 1 of the finals. I think with Ike. This is Ike we're talking about during that time, no? So coach Tab was starting to figure out also how to to match up with Embala better. Uh I think that's also one of the main reasons why Ateneo was able to pull that upset uh, during the, the following season. Diba? So imagine if they had Pero Kwame. Pero factor it, talaga wala si Teng tsaka si Perkins nun, Maui. Yes! Yeah, but but that but but the Ateneo team, uh, diba? parang you would say that Ravena wasn't seasoned, Nieto wasn't seasoned, uh, Si Aaron Black was even playing more minutes than Curdy Ravena during that first round. But they were able to match up during the finals. Almost winning the game one if it weren't for Jerome Tank's late game heroics. I remember that. I arrived sa game pa, second half na, but Jerome Tank won that game on a game winner. Game two I know. Was exactly. for X-Factor talaga si Jerome Tank, Mao. I remember. I'm holding my... I'm standing firm... On my decision, I, I I still think the season 79 Green Archers would beat the, the Ateneo. This is 82 you Blue oh, Eagles. Nice. So, subscribers, come on! Come oh, side with I, will me. Also, I will also stand, but this is this is peak 30 Ravena. I mean, we saw how he played during those last two finals. It was it wasn't it's not something we see in the UAE mm-hmm. finals. I don't think we've seen that uh, even uh, even in su- the succeeding seasons. It was a dominance na- unmatch. I think one final, he averaged 29 points, 9 rebounds, I, be, uh, and 9 assists. Ito, eh, uh, when Finals 30 was Finals 30, he didn't have, have a great ma- No one had a great matchup for him. But yeah, Season 79, yeah. Green Archers had Jerome Tang. <laughs> I don't, yeah, we're talking, I don't we're think Final Sturdy would be Final Sturdy. No, 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 no. We're talking about we, we're talking about peak CJ Cantino also, huh? from that Alvin Ayola sa uh, UST. Oh come on, Maui! Oh, wow. CJ Cantino could not about, guard Thirty Ravenna. He was much smaller. No, but but that's peak CJ Cantino. I mean, if you're talking about how good CJ Cantino was in the UP, we're not even talking about the peak CJ Cantino that we saw pre ACL. <laughs> As a scorer, yeah. but as a defender, there's no way well, anyone from the well, UST and UP team I mean, could match I mean, up with 30. I mean. But with Tia 79, this is Julian Sargent, who was their defensive stopper, was there. Well, uh, uh, so, sa akin, so, sa akin talaga, sa akin talaga, you're talking about players who went international. Isa pa yung factor na yun, di ba? Players like Benangel, players like Lavena, I mean, players like, ano, I mean, Ateneo, all of those players also went to the pros. All of the most of those players also played for Gilas. It's just this Ateneo team was just too much. I think if you're talking about Tab Baldwin Peak, this is Tab Baldwin Peak. I would argue that there are even uh, better Lasal teams than Ben Embala teams in Lenin and Wow, 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 wow. In terms Whoa, of dominance, no, perhaps, season. That yeah, perhaps, another, another, bracket. Bracket. perhaps that another bracket. Perhaps another bracket. Could be another bracket. <laughs> so for this <laughs> bracket, mong panalo season eighty two Ateneo. But to our listeners, please comment down below what you guys think. Who do you think will proceed? You can do your own bracket. Follow na lang yung the way we did our bracket brackets here, and then comment down below your picks for each round. Um. Again, this is a conversation, a discussion. So we don't expect everyone to agree with us. Go ahead. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And if there are ideas for other brackets, like what Mami mentioned, um, LaSalle teams going against each other. I think si Hoop Junkie actually recently posted something. So could be something like that. Let us know down below. But that's it for today's episode. Thank you for listening. Um, We'd like to hear your thoughts. We'll see you again next time, hopefully with another bracket. Bye-bye.